<laughs> Toby, you've got right. a question addressed to everybody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are the issues faced by residents in Escott, and how would you seek to address them? Unless people are upset, can we stick to running order and you pick some? We don't get all three Labour and all things. So, Andy, do you want to? I'm sure that uh, take somebody to answer that question. Oh, the power. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the three biggest local issue that's been surmised is. is Residential parking. Um, the, I suppose, really the the problem we've got in, in Escot is effectively there aren't enough parking spaces for the amount of cars that are in the uh, How to how resolve that? Tinkering around the edges the way we're doing at the moment. I don't think I don't think is the right way. For instance, we've just recently uh, changed a lot of um, the visitor parking spaces to residential parking spaces. And we've, we've canvassed around and we found that 50% of the people are happy with that because they, they can now park their car easier. Another 50% of the people aren't happy with it uh, effectively because they can't have visitors or they may have care workers that come along and they can't park. So as far as that's concerned, I don't think that's really uh, solved the issue. It's just created more problems. Um, the cost of residential parking as well, we all know that the cost of residential parking is too high, it's gone up fifty percent. Um, this is to do with the administration of it. This, the, the whole system needs to be looked at, how it's administered, how we can bring the cost down. Uh, the current permit system could be changed. Um, we could even get you could even go down to uh, localism, but I think there, there's cheaper ways to do it within council uh, to actually bring the cost down. Um, uh, other big issues in the actual wall itself. Oh, head to ask for um, the one thing that comes up quite a lot is there is issues with uh, dog barrowing. Um, it's part of, part of the issue is we, we know that it's difficult to enforce fines on people that let their dogs barrow. Um And in, in that in that situation, unless you're actually willing to put money forward for street wardens who are actually going to follow people around and watch people do this. So it's really, it's really a, case of, it's a case of education. One of the things I'd like to see, actually, if someone's actually walking their dog, there should be a, maybe a bile or something that you should have a pooper scooper and a bag. And if you haven't, you should be asked, well, how are you going to clear up, that? How are you going to clear up the dog family? But there also needs to be more dog, dog family bins as well. Uh, bins that have the, put the dog family. And, uh, and of course, um, split housing. Now, that's, that's, that's a huge issue in, in Escot. We're already... Uh, up to, uh, I think, approximately 4% of houses have been used for split housing. Um, it's, it's still open season in Escot as far as uh, split housing is concerned because there is no planning and permission requirements that was disbanded by the coalition government um, and there's nothing being put in place. Uh, we could have tried to work going down a control order for Escot. Uh, that hasn't happened. Uh, there's also talk about uh, a referendum uh, in November, that, that painfully won't happen because uh, the whole referendum uh, and the localism bill, uh, the referendums aren't done on a single issue. The referendum will be on uh, a neighbourhood plan which is going to be created by uh, a neighbourhood forum. That neighbourhood forum is going to take approximately 18 months to actually put together, to put a plan in place. Uh, so even if there was some sort of uh, referendum on this, it's going to be at least two years down the line, I suspect, at the next, um, at the next local council elections, but I can't see that happening. So for the, for, as far as split housing, we, we really need to concentrate on trying to get some sort of control order through planning now, otherwise we're going to have another two years of open season and more houses split, and that's just going to put too much pressure. But I would say it's, it's really that the control order should be more on splitting current houses. We do, we do need to look at affordable houses. I mean, we know there's a big social problem at the moment as far as affording houses. <coughs> people on low, low <coughs> homes, they've got no choices. They have to have, they, they have, to have these. Can, sorry. can you just wind it up? Okay, I'll wind it up there, yeah. Okay, sorry. So, split housing, dogs, park. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, the trouble is, obviously, we were going to sound a bit similar, though we mentioned maybe some of our may be different. I mean, residence parking, um, God, I don't sound like a big like a historian, but I remember residence parking when it first started, all the way back in the Crombie Street scheme. Um, I, I, I was there. 
Uh, we actually took a coach up to Trowbridge, actually to save demand residence, parking stay, and things like that there, and it really was a big issue. Indeed, we set up a, a, our own little organisation called SCARP, so the Community Action for Residence Parking. Indeed, there's a, if you ever look at Swindon Viewpoint, you'll see a, um, a film of me talking with uh, Roger Green, and that was before I was a councillor, and I had nice long hair. Um, that was back in 19... I can't remember now, 82, something like that's a long time ago. The residence parking always been an issue. What has happened? Well, sorry, I better make mention of the three issues right, before I start. I was, I was, I was, I was actually you. sitting here, so thinking, <laughs> well, you know, should I actually say no, no, it's no. fascinating stuff? Yeah, yeah, right. I'm yeah. very polite yeah, yeah, while, while Chris was talking about split houses. So. We right. perhaps have a trial round. Right, right, right yeah. Right, 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 they become hard. Right, the three issues are. Oh, oh, uh, I follow with residence parking and give our, my, my opinion on it. Split houses, again, I, I totally uh, agree. Our split houses is a big issue, and obviously, we believe there is a way forward. Uh, and antisocial behaviour, which has elements of, of dog fouling, litter, and parking, various other aspects. So, if I just concentrate on those, residence parking, yes. Residence parking has changed since it was first started. An awful lot more cars, an awful lot of more split houses, beds, it's a lot more pressure on it. So therefore, you actually reach the situation now. Have you reached the point of actually when you can't go any further? Um, there are ways around. Obviously, we, we actually started actually, you know, can actually work and make more spaces. The idea is of actually removing WL lines, create more spaces. It's, it's the one way forward to make more spaces. I mean, somebody even gave us the option of making people forced to use their garages, but I don't think you can do that. That's impossible. How many people have got garages here in Philippe Old Junk? Yeah, yeah, garage. Garage. Oh yeah, well, yeah. most people fill their, their, fill their garages with junk and convert them into bedrooms. It's, it's, not a, it's not really an option. So residence parking has to be to the forefront. Uh, the idea we, we look at actually is creating more spaces, but actually analysing actually the roads and see if it's created. We were successful in that in the previous um, scheme, creating over 100 spaces, which is significant. The idea of looking at actually how it's administered as well. At the present time, we have the borough council looks, um, does all the administration and their costs are inherently higher. Uh, higher than actually another body, which we believe a maybe a charitable institution can do it. I bring down the costs of residence parking. I mean, one of the biggest complaints we seem to receive actually the cost of business permits, which is, is true, they're incredibly high. So we want a system that residence parking is always about it to be. Actually, it's for the residents, i.e. not for the council to raise money, it's for the residents actually how they, how they can operate and live in actually our, our communities. The idea of split houses. Split houses is a difficulty. Um, I was born in Moore Street, and now in Moore Street, I would say there's probably only about, uh, in the bottom half of Cromwell Street, there's only about, I don't know, there's, there's about 40 houses there. Only about less than 10 are actually actually people who live there. The rest are actually being split into bedsits, operated by, actually by landlords. And again, with that comes problems, i.e. the lack of, lack of interest in the community, the, and also the rubbish, and all the rest of it. So there's lots of issues about that. Now, there is a, a way forward, you can actually do create neighbourhood plans. And when you put residents actually in the driving seat to create a plan there, which is a planning, a planning forum, and indeed a referendum, um, where actually you set the planning agenda in the sense of actually you say what is permittable and what isn't. The idea that actually you actually can take action against split houses. The time span isn't as great as, as alluded to, because I know Dave's been involved in this, and I think we actually have examples on our doorstep in Monsbury, where I think it's took in relatively small amount of time, and actually just because they started the, the application for that, actually it become powerful to stop a supermarket, which is the, the old thing actually there in, in Malmesbury, um, because obviously it's their, their local feeling there. So that is a possible way to, to stop the problem continuing, actually take action there. Anti-social behaviour, um, I, I give it a good, that sort of thing, because there's lots of things actually I think affect us all. The idea of dog fouling, I had a motion to full council about attacking dog fouling, and the problems there. I, I must admit, I own a dog, but it, it strikes me that it's relatively easy to clean them up with a dog. It's just common sense. Unfortunately, there are some people who don't do that. And the only way you can actually stop it, probably, actually, is actually to have more enforcement officers. So, one again of our policies is actually to create more enforcement officers, i.e., not just trap wardens, but actually enforcement officers who can actually look, at, look and do spot fines with litter, dog fouling, obviously, parking problems. I to increase that number, to double it from 14 to 28 people doing it. I to take action. And that's sometimes needed. And the good examples in this area, I think the Kent Road, I had a, a lady complain to me that every time her children go to school at King William, they're forever walking in dog's muck. It's, it's not funny, and uh, something actually needs to be taken there. And she actually had the idea of putting signs or lampposts, but she felt slightly that obviously she could be targeted in the sense that it went too far. 
So that again is an example of actually social behaviour, again, again, again the literature comes into that. Uh, again, an example actually being actually the complex actually been sat on our doorstep here actually with the, uh, uh, with the old college site there. We have the idea that maybe it should be gated so you don't have this walk-through effect. You actually do have problems with town so people walk through into this area here. So again, look at all those options there for antisocial behaviour. But I, I, I think particularly the idea that you have direct action in terms of actually the dog fouling, litter and parking is a great policy. We actually all need to see more of that. Because how many, how many people have complained about people parking in front of their houses and all the rest of it? Litter, dogs, mess. It's one of those constant complaints. If you have a standard dog mess, you, you, will, you will say to your partner, oh, I saw a nice dog today. No, you wouldn't. You're saying, oh, you know, the rest of it. So I think it's an important issue. So I'd, I'd go for those three issues if somebody's going to define three important issues to ourselves. Thank you, Stan. Bill. Yeah, there's been there's some very sensible suggestions made, but um, the problem is there are too many cars, and um, you know whatever you do about parking, there's not going to be enough space. And really, investing in parking is just a, a form of taxation. So really, what you need is some um, spend and have a much better and cheaper public transport system for the start. Um, Another thing is uh, the, the use of open space and, and green, uh, green uh, amenities in, in the area. So we need a lot more trees and so on. We need more traffic calming, 20 mile an hour limits across the whole area. Uh, on housing, yeah, this is a tremendous problem. I mean, most of the ward is small uh, terrace houses, at Victorian or Edwardian, and of course some and, you know, some of it are in quite a dreadful state and of course no, you can no longer, years ago you could get grants from the council to do renovation and all that's gone. So obviously a lot, lot of the thought needs to go into that and you know, perhaps the house, a lot of house, some of the housing budget could be used for people to do renovations and so on in the old property, especially things like loft insulation, putting in double glazing, putting in these proper uh, water, water and so on, and um, on, on generally cleaning up the area again. Yeah, of course, dogs are a perennial problem. And my son's got a couple of dogs who did try to jog with him to go around with a plastic bag in your pocket and keeps complaining and so on. It is, a, it is a big problem, but I think they're on that, and of course, just got to be a question of education and public awareness. Um, you know, you can't take, can't suddenly say to people, you take draconian measures, say no dogs allowed in here, and you know, you're going to dog clean this, find them a hundred pounds. I mean, I think that is still the case, but you very rarely uh, see that somebody is actually buying a hundred pounds for their dog mess. But perhaps the police, that's something the police could do. Um, I think you've had more than three already. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to count. So, 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 that's better. For the environment is a large thing. <laughs>